The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Hey, Mary Mead, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron here on the Parex Radio Network. Tonight, we're going to be delving into the subject of hoodoo with my guest, Miss Aida. Now, she's a seasoned magical practitioner from an eclectic background. Um, she was born into a family with a long history of spiritual work. Most of her family practiced Santeria, Palo, Brujaria, or maybe a combination of all three. She later learned hoodoo from esteemed teachers. Um, She's a natural medium and hoodoo practitioner. She's also a U.S. Air Force veteran and a registered nurse. And like I said a minute ago, we're going to be talking hoodoo and specifically her new book, Hoodoo Cleansing and Protection Magic. Now, if you're listening live and have a question or comment, um, send it over to me in private message and I will get it to her. And that's at the paraxradionetwork.com. And if you're a podcast listener, uh, come join us in the chat room every so often because you can be interactive, you can ask questions or share comments with my guests, and it's it's, it'd be nice to see your face anyway, or at least you're typing. (laughs) All right, let's get started. So, Miss Aida, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an Uh, honor. Uh, thank you. This is this is going to be good. Um, but let's. Uh, but let me just mention something uh, that growing up with Santeria and Palo and Brujaria in the bloodline, were you instinctively interested in learning about these paths from an early age, or did it kind of take a little longer to want to learn more and follow your own path? Um, very good question. Because as a a young girl. You know, everybody was trying to cram information down my throat. And, you know, as a child and growing up, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you walk away rolling your eyes, right? So Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wish I had written down every single word that every single person taught me because, wow, you know, what do they say? Youth is wasted on the young. I wasn't paying attention. (laughs) I know, I was a late bloomer too. Yeah, so it wasn't until older because, you know, and and I just wrote a, I just finished another manuscript where I tell this story that, um, you know, my mother and my aunt and my godparents, they would always get their hands dirty, right? And Mm -hmm. I was like, yuck and yuck and yuck and, oh, well, you better marry a king, you know, because you think you're a princess and da 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 you know? Until I saw the rewards they were getting, money and all that, you know, as like presents. It's like, hey, I better learn this. <laughs> <laughs> a little incentive goes a long way, right? Yeah, exactly. It did. Oh, my gosh. Well, you learned well. And this is a very well-written book, very um, informative. And it, it's, for those who don't know, it's a book um, filled with rituals and spells and your own personal magical formulas for removing negative energies and breaking malevolent spells and banishing harmful people so that we can take control and live our best lives. And that's that's very cool. And I'm, I'm going to start off by saying that there's so much in the book that needs to be shared, um, which is impossible in an hour, obviously. So I'm going to kind of mix things up a little bit and talk about things that caught my attention. Um, and, and hopefully people will, you know, want to know more about that. And then, as I said earlier to you, um, 
jump in if if need be. I mean, if you want to. But um, (laughs) one of the things, I mean, generally speaking, um, negative situations happen all the time. I mean, from minor mundane stuff to very, very bad things. But you say that there's always a way to counterattack. And those things, um, and knowing that it's possible is half the battle. And the other half can be found in the book. So, you know, this is this is one of the things that um, we're going to talk about. That that you don't have to put up with that stuff. There's plenty that we can do about it. And as you said in the first chapter of the book, it all begins with the aura. So I want to talk a little bit about auras because we all have one. But I think it's common for some people to think of auras as maybe like a mood ring in a sense or a health barometer. But let's talk about auras basically in case those may not be too familiar about it and the fact that they are wonderful shields of protection i like your your words a health barometer i never thought of it that way but it's absolutely true i love it i love it and Mm -hmm. you know the aura as you've stated are are shields that protect you and you know they start out radiant and what they do is they protect you from negative energies and it is my contention that the world has an equal balance of good and evil good and evil energies good and well, i should say negative you know positive mm-hmm. and negative yeah. energy mm-hmm. positive and negative people positive and negative locations positive and negative groups you know and and you know initially you said well you know there is a way to combat it and you know i do have it in my book because if there wasn't a way if there wasn't a way to combat negativity, this world would have ended a long time ago because all the evil people and the evil energies and everything else would have, you know, overwhelmed and taken over. So, yes, you know, there is. Everybody, everything has a weakness. So going back to the aura, um, so the aura protects us against these negative energies and these negative uh, people. And what happens is, if it becomes mildly, mildly suppressed, right? Say mm-hmm. I'm having a bad day and, and um, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. I am, and I should get a re- an award, I am the slowest driver on the planet. And I, <laughs> I really do deserve an award for that. And people pass me up, they give me the finger, blah, 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 blah call me dirty names. And, you know, I come home with a suppressed aura, right? So, mm-hmm. You know, I immediately, you know, these are minor nuisances, like you get in an argument with your spouse or your children or whatever. It's a minor nuisance, and you're starting to feel like a dark cloud. That dark cloud isn't really a dark cloud. What is happening is because the aura is suppressed, right, you're starting to feel the negativity that's automatically or, in, you know, right there. It's always been there. So, you know, you replenish your, your aura, and you can do that with, Lots of things. You know, yesterday on my live event, I used the the holy water and the Florida water as two examples, but I have many, many ways of doing that. So if you don't, if you don't, and then there's more arguments, and then there's, you know, what's going to happen is negativity begets negativity, right? Then worse (laughs) things happen to you, you know? That that saying, Murphy's Law, how does that go? Um, Whatever, um, whatever, yeah, anything that, can happen will happen right anything you know you know that that does take effect right but it's you it's you because you have negativity on you already you haven't replenished that so then you're drawing in more and more and more and more and it can get worse you know it can get worse and i'm not gonna say it's gonna get worse because people are giving me the finger right but Mm -hmm. you know if i go out the next day and the neighbors are yelling at me, and, and I didn't replenish anything. I didn't, you know, give my aura a proverbial bath, right? Mm-hmm. And then they start picking on me, and then I go to work, and they start picking on me. And, you know, now that's going to affect my self-esteem. So then it becomes more suppressed and more suppressed. And, you know, as negative events happen to you and, and you don't counterattack, you know, it can get severely suppressed. And... Eventually, you can get holes and tears in, in the aura. And how does that happen? You know, I, I, I don't want to um, give a concept without an explanation. Mm-hmm. And 
as a nurse, you know, I'm a registered nurse, we are into signs and symptoms. So we, you know, signs and symptoms of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the signs and symptoms, what does it feel like? It feels like a dark cloud, right? And it is kind of in a way because what it is, is you're feeling the negativity that's in the atmosphere because Mm -hmm. your aura is suppressed. And the more negative energies that you attract, right, it piles on. It suppresses your aura even more. So then you're piling on more and more. And you're going to end up with like hunks of negativity, just like dust. If you don't clean up dust, you're going to have hunks of dirt, right? And mm-hmm. that weighs down on the aura. And then what happens? You get holes and tears. And mm-hmm. then you're into big trouble. And it kind of gets gunked up like chakras too, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, it can only take so much whatever. And And here's something that, that people may not know, but auras need to be cleansed and protected. And it's it really, from what I've read in the book, pretty easy. There's some really interesting ways to do it, um, like with eggs. I like that. Um, and you might want to explain how you cleanse your aura with eggs because I found it fascinating. Okay, so cleansing your aura with eggs, you can do it two different ways. And eggs will absorb negativity. So you can either start at the top of your head and roll it all over your body slowly. You go top to bottom. In hoodoo, top to bottom represents making something go away. Mm -hmm. And when you do something bottom to top, it represents drawing something to you. Like, like for example, um, if I wanted to attract the attention of men, right, Mm -hmm. I, I would make an oil and I would start at the bottom, right? Mm-hmm. Around my feet and I would roll the, the oil or anoint the oil in an upward motion. Mm-hmm. But because we're making something go away, right? Mm-hmm. We're going top to bottom. So you can do this in a very slow motion all over your your body, top to bottom, or you can just um, do this over the chakras, the seven major chakra centers. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to dispose that egg. And I do have that in my book that Mm -hmm. my aunt, my Aunt Isabel, I had a hard time writing Aunt Isabel because in Spanish, Tia, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And uh, I could never say Tia Isabel, so I'd always say Tia Sabel, right? Tia Sabel. (laughs) So, you know, Tia Sabel, she'd be like screaming and yelling and throwing that in the toilet and flushing the toilet, you know, to make it go away into the store. Like you're getting rid of that negative energy. Mm -hmm. My mother didn't do that. Okay. My mother would crack the egg and put it in a glass of water. Right. And then she'd wait 24 hours and look at the symbols that it made. Right. And, you know, you can buy books on tea leaf interpretations, right? Because they're the Mm -hmm. same as, um, candle wax interpretations, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I see a, a dove in, in a, I'm not a tea leaf reader, but if I see a dove in, in coffee grounds or tea leaves or whatever, it's, it's the same interpretation if I were reading candle wax. So I have a, a few tea leaf, you know, interpretation books, and it's the same way with eggs, right? So mm-hmm. you, you look at the symbols in the eggs and you can either see favorable or unfavorable things. The other thing though, with eggs, it's more elaborate because it gives you, the whites will give you a scenery. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the egg white. So if, if the um, cleansing was unfavorable, you know, if she wasn't seeing something really beautiful, we do it again and again. And if that didn't work, you know, three times, you know, what do they say? Three times a charm. So if, that didn't work the third time, then we go to something, you know, heavier. And there's different levels of cleansing, okay? Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's easy things like crystals and eggs and holy water and Florida water and rue water and agrimony water and, and rosemary water, you know, and, mm-hmm. and how do you make this? You, you steep a tablespoon of rosemary or a tablespoon of hyssop or a tablespoon of rue in in you steep it in boiling water, right? Mm-hmm. Wait thir- 13 minutes and then strain it. Keep the herbs because you want to, you know, put them back outside, you know, mm-hmm. with, as a, an action of respect, like returning them for Wednesday came, right? And right. then you can just put it in a spray bottle and then spray yourself. So 
you know, there's different things. There's easy stuff like that, using crystals, right? And then we have to might have to go to more elaborate things like taking a bath, right? Taking a mm-hmm. spiritual bath. Maybe once isn't enough. Maybe it is, right? So mm-hmm. you can do um, a bath with water and, and sea salt, you know, a mm-hmm. tablespoon of sea salt, or uh, a bathtub of water with only one, only no more than one tablespoon of ammonia. There's different things. Then if it's really, really, really bad, you know, then you can, you know, you might have to do a 13-day bath with, with, you know, the 13 herbs that are uncrossing herbs. So there's there's mm-hmm. different levels for yeah. the severity of the, and, you know, I don't know what else to call it, the severity of the affliction. Yeah. And the book, you know, tells you over and over, for this, this is what you're going to feel. For this, this is what you're going to feel. But the other thing that I include in that book is why this is happening. Why did this happen? Yes. So you know the whys. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You just mm-hmm. don't. Yeah. And then- it, 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 it helps to explain. I mean, you get a better grip on what you're doing. There's a quick um, chat room question. Um, couldn't you cleanse your aura well in the shower too, meaning water flowing, cleansing? Does that work? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can also bathe with um sulfur soap i love sulfur soap there's rue soap right Mm -hmm. and yeah absolutely yes and water is you know that expression singing in the shower you know the reason that (laughs) we're singing in the shower is because water is spiritual so yeah absolutely. and you're washing away because i always tell people i said when you're in the shower wash all that negative negativity off you i don't mention auras but it's just like envision all that water taking all that negative and and sending it down the drain you know right. a little creative visualization exactly. going on there now yep. you mentioned yep. oh and that's another technique too yeah. by the way well that's a reflection yeah. technique you know mm-hmm. as a creative visualization i'm glad you brought that up and we will so you okay we, I mean, there's, uh, yeah. Um, but I, before I forget, speaking of crystals, though, um, some people really wonder if they can really cleanse and heal. And you have a really good story in the book about the power of about crystals. It, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think it, it, okay. it bears saying, talking about. Okay. 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 If I start crying, it's going to be your fault. So anyway. Okay. I take the blame. All right. Because <laughs> I told I told you in my email I lost my baby. Remember? Yes. So I know. anyway, I know. So I went to I, I saw an advertisement in the paper for a white German Shepherd. I had German Shepherds my whole life. I'm 64, and I've had German Shepherds and only German Shepherd dogs since I was 12. Right? I've never had any other breed, and. You know, I read in the paper White German Shepherd, and I thought, what the heck is that? You know, I never heard of that. So I called the breeder, and she's explaining to me all about White German Shepherds, which um, was so fascinating that I later became the vice president of a a White German Shepherd Club. But um, going back to that, so I go, I drive all the way out to this, this farm, and you know, she had the most disgusting puppies. I mean, they were just disgusting. I mean, she lived in a pigsty. And, you know, fleas and everything. The dogs were filthy. And there was one puppy that was really sick. Because I told her I only wanted females, so she brought the females out, right? Mm-hmm. And the one puppy was screaming at the top of her lungs, and another puppy was trying to help her. And they finally you know, took away the screaming puppy and the one that was trying to help her, she's sitting there with her toy giving me this look, this Mm -hmm. look. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, she was only three months old. I'm better than you are. I mean, I'll never forget that look, right? So, (laughs) you know, it was like really disgusting. I went to hold her and it was like really disgusting. And I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. And I drove away and I get, ooh, I don't know two miles away and I called her and I said, I'm coming back for the puppy. And she said, I knew you would. I saw the way the two of you were looking at each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So I bought her and I brought her home and I took her to the vet and, you know, she had all kinds of infestations. It was gross, you know, Mm -hmm. but you know, we got rid of it. And then, you know, she started developing, um, 
gastrointestinal problems, okay? Mm -hmm. And she was dying, and I took her to this vet and that vet and blah, 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 blah. And I ended up, like, spending $7,000, right? The dog only cost me 1000 but now I'm paying 7000 So now, <laughs> you know, in, in a month, I've paid $8,000, right? Mm-hmm. And I kept taking her back to this one clinic. Excuse me, I'm going to drink a little bit of uh, Coca-Cola here. Sure, sure. And <clears throat> so anyway, um, I kept taking her back to this clinic, this clinic, and I go in one day with, with the puppy because they had suggested, you know, numerous times I need to put her down. There's no, they tried everything, nothing worked. And um, so anyway, um, I was so embarrassed because it was a clinic and they had an intervention for me as if I were an alcoholic. Or a oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> they had an intervention that I need to put this dog down and I wouldn't do it. I mean, just, I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So, I go to, you know, and at the time I was living in Florida, I lived in Florida for about three years and, you know, a lot of crystal shops in the area that I was living in. So I said, you know, let me, let me, you know, go talk to some people. And they said, you know, a double terminated quartz will help. And that's like a point at each end, right? That's what double terminated means. So, you know, I, you know, I felt the ones that were right and, you know, came home and cleansed it and everything. And then I did a ritual, and it was kind of, kind of half Wiccan. I'm not a Wiccan, you know, but you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of concepts in in that, you know, faith that are, you know, astounding. You know, they're, right. they're wonderful. So, yeah. you know, I um, never did this before, but I went sky clad, right? And <laughs> anyway, well, I figured, hey, I'm working with crystals here. I might as well do it right. So anyway, I'm taking this one crystal. Was the only crystal that liked me, and. You know, she laid down. It was so weird. She laid on her back with her legs spread apart. It was really bizarre. It's like, how would a, a four-month puppy, old puppy, know to do this? She wouldn't move. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I talked to the crystal, and it was like, please help, you know, my baby, blah, 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 blah. And I'm slowly rolling this, slowly, because I don't know where the problem is, you know. And, you know, the intestine is large, right? Mm-hmm. And... Anyway, it was a long, tedious process, but I was determined. And so anyway, um, I, when I finally was done, I looked at the crystal, and there were, was black in it. There was mm-hmm. black in it. It didn't start out that way. It was a clear mm-hmm. crystal. Yeah. Okay. I know yeah. you're not shocked, but to this day, I'm still shocked. I still have that crystal. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll just never forget it, Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's safely put away in my in my jewelry box because you know it just reminds me of the power of crystal. Mm-hmm. So anyway, she was cured. She was cured, and they couldn't figure out. Oh, this was the funny part that I didn't put in the book. Okay, so they called me a couple of weeks later. The one that the um, the clinic that had the intervention for me, mm-hmm. and they called me, and I didn't put this in the book, but it was so funny because. You know, they're still trying to talk me into putting the puppy down because they felt that she was suffering. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's completely cured. She's completely cured. She's gained six pounds. You know, she's happy. Mm -hmm. And they they thought I was lying. They thought I was lying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the power of crystals is absolutely amazing. Just Mm -hmm. amazing. And and it does work, and and that's a really good um, story to tell because it it yeah. did work, yeah. and and yeah, and then you even had I mean, visuals, and I've heard of crystals going black in healing. Before. I've never that's, I never heard of that, or I seen yeah. it. But she lived to be eleven years old. I have her, you know, two of her kids here. I have a grandkid here, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, eleven years old because yeah. of that crystal. Because exactly. Of crystal. Yeah. Now. Um, Oh, by the way, that's a picture. That's Athena, the picture that you have. On the banner, yeah. 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 I'll I'll put it in the chat room in a minute. Um, But, you know, one thing that we also need to talk about is Mercury in retrograde, um, because that's something that lots of people get uneasy about. But you've got a solution to protect us from the harmful energies that go along with it. And, you know, because people are always talking about, oh, Mercury in retrograde is bad. Um, you know, how did you come up with that? That's very something I haven't seen before is a, a cure for mercury in retrograde or, or a counterattack. Right. Um, I, I found it on a website. 
I found it on a website. Um, I think it was called Hibiscus Moon, and mm-hmm. she's a teacher. And I said, well, you know, let me try this out. And son of a gun, it worked. It worked. So, you know, you put these communication crystals. You know, she didn't go as far as, you know, I kind of hoodooized it because, you know, in, in hoodoo, um, communication is um, correlated with the color yellow, right? So mm-hmm. I, I put the crystals in a yellow bag. And, you know, of course, you have to clean your crystals. You have to clean them every time you use them. So, you know, when the, the three weeks are over, I, I cleanse the crystals so that they're they're ready again. I cleanse and charge them so they're ready again for the next retrograde. But, you know, it, it's said, and I'm not an astrologer, okay? I um, I don't profess to be one, and, and I, you know, I... It's too difficult, I'll tell you. It's really, I know. that's a science. I'm telling you, it's really difficult. But mm-hmm. um, I do know that people with a rising and ascending sign, a sun sign or a moon sign in either Virgo or Gemini are affected, you know, the, the most harsh, harshly by mm-hmm. um, Mercury in retrograde. And my rising sign is in Virgo. And every time before I even knew what Mercury in retrograde was, it was affecting me, right? So it's yeah. not my imagination. And a lot of people think we want imagination, and that's baloney. How can your imagination shut down computers? How can your imagination shut down tele- um, telephone conversations? That's not your imagination. That's Mercury in retrograde, which happens often when Mercury's in retrograde. So mm-hmm. anyway, um, um, I put these crystals in my in the bag and I, I put them in my bra, you know, mm-hmm. and I I was not affected at all. Not mm-hmm. at all. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And the crystals are in the book. But, mm-hmm. you know, I have to thank Hibiscus Moon because I've tried everything else, but this was very effective. And I've, um, I've um, sold quite a few bags to, mm-hmm. to clients that are really close to me. And, mm-hmm. oh, my God, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. So yeah. she found the right stones. She sure did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody finally came up with something that people can do, especially those that are really, right. really um, mm-hmm. affected by it. Now, we've got to go to break in about two minutes, but I've got a quick question for the chat room. And if it takes you three minutes to answer, it's okay. Um how can you tell when your chakras are out of alignment and how do you line them up correctly? I'm, I'm not an, I'm not an expert on chakras. I don't know. You know, I, I would just suggest that you get the correlating crystal for the chakra. And there's mm-hmm. lots of books out there that tell you what um, stones, what, what crystals correlate, which with, with the chakras mm-hmm. and you would, you know, hold them, over each chakra, I would do it top to bottom, right? Mm-hmm. And that would be the best way to try to align them. Well, yeah. Along with creative visualization, too. You know, I was taught a long time ago that um, visualizing your chakra, right? Mm-hmm. And what, and then visualizing little black stuff, like little black specks, and then getting rid of it. And the best way that I would do it is I visualized a little tiny vacuum cleaner, Mm-hmm. over each of my chakras one by one and it would suck that the little black specks out and it actually it actually worked for me but mm-hmm. that's the best i can do i'm not an expert on chakras all right well thank you for being honest um because i'm not either <laughs> i don't yeah some things go over my head um when we come back we have a whole lot to talk about um one of the things that i want to bring up or amulets because people will always think oh well that's a cute idea but they do work and so we're going to talk about that um and then i've picked a few things out of different chapters that hit me on the forehead and said hey we need to be talked about and i'm sure you probably got things to talk about as well so let's take a quick break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes so just stay tuned everybody stirring the cauldron we'll be right back so don't go away if you end up with Remember, you've been warned. Missed an episode of Stirring the Cauldron? Then be sure to check out MarlaBrooks.com and check out the archive. And while you're there, check out Marla's weekly Witches Oracle card reading. Explore the site to find many great resources, such as information on tarot, oracle readings, 
metaphysical consultations, and links to all of Marla's books. That's MarlaBrooks.com. Rhett, Rhett, where are you going? I'm going back to the paranormal view, back where I belong. Please, please, take me with you. No, I'm through with everything here. I want to see if there's something left in life I haven't explored. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Rhett, Rhett, don't run to them. They talk about ghosts and hauntings, UFOs and all kinds of supernatural scary stuff. You'll never understand, will you, Scarlet? No! Well, that's your misfortune. Rhett! 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 Rhett, if you go, where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear... Line! Oh, you you gotta be kidding. That's the Paranormal View with your host, Henry Foister, Jeffrey Gould, and Barbara Duncan. Every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on the Para-X Radio Network. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And um, we're going to pick up where we left off, talking about the book, Hoodoo Cleansing and Protective Magic. Um, and just before the break, we were talking about amulets. Well, I mentioned amulets. Um, and they're a very good source of protection, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, they are. <laughs> and, and yeah, and people might think that, you know, you just have to wear one all the time. But depending on the circumstance, you can always switch them around. And, you know, whatever is bugging you, wear the amulet to get rid of that, right? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I wear a lot of them. I have, um, I wear the, the, <laughs> wear the, um, I'm Catholic, okay? Mm-hmm. I wear the, um, the Jewish Star of David. Mm-hmm. I wear the, um, pentagram, or the mm-hmm. pentacle, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I wear the, the, the crucifix. You know, I wear the amethyst. <laughs> I wear everything. You, but you name it, I've got it on me. <laughs> St. Christopher medal? That's for protection. Um, um, that's in my car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's how much I know. Yeah. No, he, he's, a, he's a saint for travelers, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. you know, St. Christopher's in my car. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's jump into some of the um, other topics because, again, for amulets, um, look it up. I mean, you can find the information anywhere. If you want protection from something, certain amulets, talisman, um, very easy to find. Um, so, yeah, and, and you can be like <laughs> be like you and, and wear, you know, cover all bases, which is true. I used, to, <laughs> I, I used to wear a pentagram and a Solomon seal because the Solomon seal, you know, is... is oh, it, I have that also. I forgot that. That's not a separate thing. I never take that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And okay, so here's a really two minute, not even a minute story. I always have this... The, Solomon seal on because there was really weird things going on in the house so I always kept it on with the pentagram and everything else and one day I'm standing there at the stove and I'm going to cook something and all of a sudden clunk down at my feet goes the, the Solomon seal and it was mm-hmm. a heavy pewter one and I looked and my chain wasn't broken so I grabbed the amulet and looked at the jump ring and that wasn't broken either I don't know how that it thing fell hit. off huh Wow. I said it took a hit. It took it. We, we say in, in hoodoo yeah, that yeah. when protective jewelry, you know, breaks, they're taking a hit. Or if a pet dies suddenly for no reason, it took a hit. It mm-hmm. took a, a spiritual hit. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. That's good to know because, I mean, I couldn't figure it out. Nothing was broken. You know, the chain was broken, whatever. But you hear of apports moving around and things happening. So, you know, right, it scared the right, hell out right. of me when I saw that down um, there. And and I quick put it back on and said, don't go anywhere again, please stay where you are. <laughs> yeah, I feel better about that. All right. Yeah. So when my when my stuff takes a um, a hit, you know, I spray it with holy water, and you can also spray it with sea salt water, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to cleanse it, right? And you know, give it back its strength. Yeah. Well, that's that's what we need to do. Um. And so. Let's talk about a couple of other things. Um, you wrote about um, illness, 
in one of the chapters uh, about the effects on the infirmed and the caregivers. So mm. kind of give us a synopsis of that chapter, you know, really quickly. And then let's talk about what jumped out at me about that more than anything was the saints who assist in healing and how we work with them. And I think that's, that's something to talk about. Okay. So the synopsis is that your physiological status, your emotional status, and your spiritual status are all connected and all interrelated. Okay. And when one is affected, the other two are affected, right? Because they all represent health. They all do. And so if you, if my, if my aura were radiant and I had an illness and I didn't know what it was again, you know, I'm, I'm always going to go back to knowledge is power, right? So Mm -hmm. I have a fear of the unknown. Let's say I've got, um, you know, abdominal pain. And that's a perfect example for women because when a woman comes in the emergency room with abdominal pain, God only knows what it is. You know, is it an appendicitis? Mm-hmm. You know, acute appendicitis? Is it, you know, ovarian cyst bust? Is it cancer? Did the, was there a, a, an ectopic pregnancy? I, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, my God, when women come in with an abdominal pain, it's just a series of tests, right? right. So I don't know what it is. I, you know, and I'm, I'm just hypothetically, right? I don't know what this is, right? So, mm-hmm. but I'm in pain, and... Now my emotional status has changed, right? Yes. And I'm more concentrated on this, like, oh, my God, am I going to die? You know, what is it? Blah, 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 blah. And then my aura becomes suppressed, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just say, um, hypothetically, they don't know what it is. Or it's, let's just say, you know, knock on wood, that it's carcinoma, okay? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't teach me any of the psychological um, tips that, will help me to to have a a better life they're just giving me medical treatment you know the the medical the the chemotherapy whatever Mm -hmm. they're giving me Mm -hmm. radiation therapy right so now my emotional status becomes more and more you know concerned and and isolated you know i've got the maslow's higher uh hierarchy of needs there and and now instead of being closer to the top of the pyramid i'm at the bottom worried about uh, survival, right? Mm-hmm. And now my aura is very, very suppressed because now the aura is, you know, has um, just piled down with dirt now, right? Mm-hmm. So then, and, and I, I explained this earlier, you know, you can get holes and tears and all that, and then you can draw in negative entities. And, you know, if I'm hospitalized, let's just say I'm hospitalized and I'm really sick, you know, they put me in a room with machines to go, eh, ah, eh, ah, ah, ah. If I don't have enough money, because, you know, they gouge you. They gouge you with, you know, television fees and telephone fees. So I can't afford that, right? Mm-hmm. And your your room is semi-private. They've got a curtain closed. So now your, your, your space is even, you know, isolated even more so, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, I, and it, it can get really bad, right? So, you know, now you're attracting the attention of, of bad entities, right? So you might be lonely and, and, and scared. And, you know, I've seen so many patients that start talking to themselves. Well, they're not talking to themselves. They're actually talking to an entity. And then things get worse, right? And then you'll see machine breakdowns and all that because, Entities, negative entities, just like negative people, you know, they're going to worm their way into your lives by first charming you and making you feel good about yourself. And then they're like, they're parasitic, just like people are, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, you start becoming vicious and everything else. And then the caregiver takes the rap, you know, and in fact, I I think I I wrote that in there, the caregiver takes the rap. So now Mm -hmm. they're swearing at the caregiver, they're, you know, calling on the caregiver. And it doesn't matter if you're in a hospital or at home, right? You're just constantly mm-hmm. calling that person, you know, give me this box of Kleenex. Well, the box of Kleenex is within your arm's reach, you know, but they're doing that for attention and everything else. So then they start swearing and they can physically assault you, right? So now the caregiver is also infested with negative energies, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. And, you know, but those kinds of things can be 
alleviate it. I'm not going to say they're remedy. I'm not offering a cure for anything, okay? But, you know, they can be alleviated by, you know, doing mundane things, you know, like opening the window and, and getting fresh air, sunlight, you know. Mm-hmm. Negative entities hate that. They hate that fresh air and sunshine. They hate that stuff, you know. Give them a television, give them music that they like, make them happy, you know, try to crack a joke, you know, um, negative entities hate that stuff, you know, they'll, they'll leave, they can't stand that, right? They, mm-hmm. they, they're, they thrive on negativity, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's like, and the one thing that I do advise in there for el- the elderly, and I think this is very, very important, is make them feel needed, you know? As I have, I'm 64 now, okay, and I'm so mad at myself because I never listened to my grandmother. I thought my grandmother was just, you know, because my dad's side is Greek, right? And, Mm -hmm. you know, my grandmother is like, ah, she's just an old woman that she doesn't know anything. She's old, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, now I'm really, really sorry because, oh, my God, you know, that old saying that when an older person dies, a a whole library goes with them, right? But if you ask them for advice, you know, and you ask them what they think about this and that and that and this, you know, two things are going to be happening. One, you're going to make them feel important and needed. And two, you're going to learn something. Mm-hmm. When I was um, a nurse's aide in a nursing home, right, we had this old woman. Her name was Harriet. She was 98 years old, and she was horrible. She was a horrible woman, Okay. Mm-hmm. And she had a cane, and she hit us all with that cane, right? Oh. And I said, you know, I gotta, I gotta work around this. I gotta do something. This is when I was a nurse's aide, right? Mm-hmm. And she always had change. I always noticed that. So I would purposely not have change. And I go, Harriet, can I have a change for a dollar? And I never saw anybody light up. So you know, she looked like a Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. And so then I got into the habit or I'd stop at the gas station and get dollar bills for my change so that I could <clears> ask her for change. <laughs> Next thing you know, she's got her daughter coming in, giving her change. Now I talk to all the other nurses, nurses, aides to do the same t- thing. Oh, my God. She ended up being the nicest person in the world and the queen of the nursing home. Sure. You know, so, I mean, you know, make them feel important. Mm-hmm. You know, and if that's a, a valuable. I'm giving you a lot of nursing advice too because I'm a nurse. <laughs> well, that's okay. I was in medical office for 30 years, so I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm so, onto right. what so you're, you're saying. Right. It makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So, all right. So, who are some of the saints and uh, that will assist us in healing, and how can we work with them? Okay, so Saint Raphael, he's an archangel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he's involved in healing. And, you know, I, I don't know the prayers by heart, okay? The only the only prayer I know by heart is Psalm 23. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I have the prayer for him, and he helps in healing. Um, St. Lazarus, be, you know, because of, you know, my Santeria background, you know, mm-hmm. St. Lazarus, he's also known as Baba Lua, yay, but he's St. Lazarus, right? Mm-hmm. And he helps with bone ailments and skin ailments because, you know, he had leprosy, right? So, mm-hmm. and... If you see any statues of him, he's he's walking with canes and he's got a dog near him, right? Mm -hmm. And um, then you got, like, for um, emotional problems, you've got um, St. Dithna, you know. You've got uh, St. Rita for abused people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be abused women. and It doesn't have to be an intimate partner violence situation. It can be... A parent, child, a child, parent, you know, that's still domestic violence, you know. So you can pray to her. And, you know, the one saint that he's known for lost causes is St. Jude, you know. So, yes. so there's, yes. there's, you know, there's more in the book, but, you know, those, those mm-hmm. are some of the main saints. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, I'm going back to something um, about <clears throat> negative people. Um because what you know, we can walk. It does have to be people that we're in direct contact with. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. We can walk down the street, and um, we can catch negative cooties from people because they're they're emanating from them. So whether we know it or not, um, you know, we can catch from strangers, and all of a sudden we're not feeling right. And we can't figure it out. Um, so what can we do about catching? something from 
people that we don't know, basically. Yes, cleanse, cleanse your aura. Use the holy water. Use the Florida water, okay? Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I compare this to, to dog hair, right? So <laughs> German shepherds. I have three German shepherds, and I've told you earlier, I always have had German shepherds. The mm-hmm. beauty, and I say this sarcastically, the beauty of German shepherds is they have two coats. Right. Yep. So they're shedding all the time. And if mm-hmm. I don't vacuum every single day and mop, and I have to do this, I have to vacuum every day and mop the floor every day. Right. Because mm-hmm. if I don't, then there's hair everywhere, you know, and if I don't, then hair can get in my mouth, hair can get in my food, hair can mm-hmm. get in my nasal passageways. Right. So, you know, what do you do? You clean. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, the same thing, you just clean your aura. But, you know, that's um, <clears throat> a, a very good point that you've made is, you know, a lot of times our gut instinct will tell you, you know, somebody could be good and just having a bad day and, and mm-hmm. shed their negativity on you, right, just mm-hmm. like dog hair sheds, yeah. you know. But there are bad people. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think the problem with good people like us is that somebody can be bad, we can just meet them, right? Mm-hmm. And we get this feeling like, ugh, you know, ugh. And, you know, it's like we're feeling some, you know, we're, you know, this is either our spirit guides or our guardian angel saying, you know, back off, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Or it could be that we're sensing their, you know, the negativity of their aura. But our problem as good people is we blow it off as our imagination. Mm-hmm. And then we try to um, see the good in that person. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you know, especially with con artists and, and scammers and liars and thieves and, you know, I've known a lot of people that have befriended me just so that they could get information out of me and, and then call it their own spells or call it their own whatever. Right. Why? Because I ignored the warning signs. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a joke, there's a joke and it applies to all of us, Okay. There's a joke, and I'll make this really fast. There was a mm-hmm. flood, right? Mm-hmm. And there was this man, and, you know, this boat came by, and they said, get on a boat. He says, no, 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 the Lord will take care of me. The flood, flood gets higher, right? Mm-hmm. He's now on the roof of the house. And another boat comes by, and they go, get in the boat. He says, no, 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 I'm fine. The Lord will take care of me. Now the flood gets even higher, right? He's hanging from the top of his chimney, and... A helicopter comes by, throws a ladder down. I, I think it was a Coast Guard, right? And mm-hmm. they're yelling, climb up the ladder. And he says, no, 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 I'm going to live. I'm going to be fine. The Lord will take care of me. Well, he dies, right? Goes mm-hmm. to heaven, and he says, God, you know, there was a flood, and you didn't take care of me. God says, well, what do you want? I sent you two boats and a helicopter, right? <laughs> so that, that happens with us, okay? Mm-hmm. We keep ignoring warning signs. We keep Mm -hmm. ignoring, and then what happens, because we want to see the good in people, and those bad people look at us as patsies, and then we get taken in. Mm -hmm. It happens all of us, but I I want to, you know, want to make something clear here, is if you've been a victim of anything, if you've been a victim of a con artist, a scammer, a liar, a thief, and, you know, a, a, a violent person, whatever, you know, we all make mistakes, all of us. Okay, if I were to write my mistakes, I would have in my lifetime, I would have an encyclopedia of mistakes that I've made. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just makes you a stronger and wiser person if you take the action to try to overcome these things. And I've quoted, you know, Nelson Mandela. Oh, my God, what a great man. Right. And Mm -hmm. he says, judge me not by my successes. Judge me by all the times that I failed and got back up. And, you know, that's what this life is about. It's about learning and teaching others. Mm -hmm. It is. And, I mean, there's so many things in the book that you cover. Um, I'm just going to throw things out there. We probably don't have a whole lot of time to talk about them. But we're talking about um, harmful spiritual entities and how sometimes, um, you know, you, you even include angels on that list. And people are like, no, not angels. But then they forget about the fallen angels, right? Um, Right. You talk about wild spirits. You talk about how we inadvertently attract negative entities. You talk about negative spells and curses and and things, spells that have gone awry. And you also mention and and I just kind of surprised me. Most curses do fade away, do they? 
Right. Yes. Yes. Even if you don't do anything about them, they they'll just fade. Yep. Okay. I'm well, see. Know, it could be a generational curse. You know, if it's a general yeah. generational yeah. curse, mm-hmm. then we're into problems here. You know, in fact, someone right. asked me the other day, you know, Joe Kennedy, um, you know, yeah. all his, you know, you know, the tragedy yes. with the Kennedy yeah. family. Yep. And he goes, well, what do you think about that? I says, well, you know, I think it's generational curse. And what mm-hmm. I think, because Joe was a bootlegger, right? Mm-hmm. And um, that's John and Robert's and Teddy's and everybody else's father, right? Mm-hmm. I think he double-crossed a lot of people. And in his yeah. path, he double-crossed somebody who practiced magic, right? So generational curses don't go away. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that I can advise to people is if they've been affected by a generational curse is, you know, take precautionary measures every day. And what I recommend is, you know, drinking, you know, for someone who's a victim of that, right, mm-hmm. is um, they're going to have to just use protection, right? Yeah. So it's almost like it's almost like you've got a cancer, but if you do the chemotherapy every day, you're going to live, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I would say drink nettle tea, one cup of net of tea that has nettle, N-E-T-T-L-E. Drink a cup of tea, in, you know, every day, one cup of tea. Pray Psalm 91 out loud in the morning, as the strongest protection prayer in the Bible, and pray Psalm 121 at night because that's also a protection um, prayer, but it also protects you against entities. So I would certainly be spraying myself with something to protect myself and wearing amulets. So, I mean, you can combat it. You can combat a generational curse, but, you know, how do you find out what the curse was? I I don't, you know, that's, that's a hard thing. There's so many different types of curses, but... You know, if you put a spell on somebody, you know, whether it's a love spell or whatever type of spell, unless you're not continuing on, it's going to it's going to fade away. Mm-hmm. You know, I also have something in the book that, you know, if something's buried in a cemetery, you know, the, the mm-hmm. spirit of the dead person will watch that. But, you know, I've got a little bit of a problem with that also, because I don't think that that spirit is going to spend the rest of eternity guarding this for you. OK, <laughs> and uh, they got better things to do. And in Hoodoo, there's different thoughts that, you know, they will eventually cross over. OK, mm-hmm. so, you know, they say at a certain age, you know, it, it's, it's involved. I, I, I only have a few minutes to talk, so I won't get into it. So, you know, even that is a little questionable, too. Mm-hmm. So. Well, there's a question in the chat room, too, um, about generational curses. Um, she said, but. The retribution for a generational curse would be massive, wouldn't it? I'm not understanding what the question is. I apologize. Um, Explain this to me. Well, I guess oh, because... Oh, you mean the karma. You mean the karma. Well, yeah, because there's so many... In, if it's generational, there, there's there got to be hundreds and hundreds of relatives in that line. In, right, you know. right. So it would probably be pretty massive to um, try and... Well, and a lot of people wouldn't be able to control it anyway because they wouldn't know about it. They might not be yeah, close enough I, to I, it. I think I know what – I think I understand the question. So okay. it would probably happen, you know, the the karmic payback would probably happen when there are no more offsprings left. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. then I think the retribution would take place. Good point. Good point. Okay. Um now, I think the most important aspect of this book is to remember that each and every one of us must trust our gut feelings. I mean, if we, like you were talking about, if you sense any red flags, if you, you know, pay attention to them, um, walk away and, 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 you know, you just have to really trust your gut and um, that knowing that there are things that we can do for all these things because again the book is talking about negative spells it's talking about severe spiritual activities like possessions and and things like that that need professional help i mean you know um again the harmful entities i mean the book is just full of all the stuff that you need to know what to avoid and how to avoid it and i think that's really important so i mean that's the crooks of it but the book is is just full of stuff guys so really important for you to know um and i said we're winding down but quickly um give out your website address and tell everybody what people can find there like like you know readings and magical coaching and those spell 
uh, mojo bags and and merc oh yeah the mercury in in uh, retrograde crystal bag. So where can they find you? Well, I think you've named all the services. I do psychic readings, magical coaching. MissAida.com, M-I-S-S-A-I-D-A.com. And please like my Facebook page. It's Miss Aida Psychic. And uh, that's where you can find me. Yeah, and really, you can get lost on the website. I mean, I was there, oh, look at this, oh, look at that. You know, it's like a little kid. Oh, I want to look here. I want to read that. And and the same thing with the book. Um, it really holds your attention, and, you know, it, it opened my eyes to a lot of things that I thought I kind of knew about, but um, not completely. So it, it's really kind of a good book for everybody that, that – and, and let's face it, we live in a negative world right now. Everything – doesn't seem to be sunshine and lollipops. So, um, you know, this might be a good time to, to pick up the book and, and start to figure things out because we can do it and make it different. So that's really important. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your book. And oh, hope- thank you. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. Oh, don't be. It's, it's just me. But um, <laughs> hopefully you'll come back and talk maybe an, about another book. You said you, you're working on a manuscript now. And then I also like, um, I was looking and you've got your book, um, Destroying Relationships, which isn't exactly what people think it might be when you're saying, you know, with that title. Um, it's not like breaking up marriages and things like that. But, I mean, you know, come back and let's talk about some more books and talk about some stuff. And, um, yeah. It would be my honor. We can, I can talk about anything. You name it, I can talk about it. <laughs> Good. Well, so can I. Except, We're- except, you know, I'm not. I'm not an expert in your arena you know i'm not a paranormal investigator so you know i that you guys are the experts on that one well yeah, yeah that's that's well i do that but it's not really my strong suit i'm too busy stirring a cauldron um to <laughs> but i know a little bit so, so that that's a good thing so anyway thank, thank you, you again and i want to thank, thank everybody you. for listening in as well and until next time everybody blessed be and merry meet again good night Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited.